Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Kurt de Ketelaar. I'm the Secretary General of the League of European Research Universities. Uh, and it's my pleasure to, to join you shortly this afternoon to make a intervention on the issue of the legal protection of academic freedom in the European Union. Apologies that I'm not with you in person this afternoon, but I had a number of obligations here in Helsinki, Finland, which made that I could not join you in person in Brussels. The League of European Research Universities is working on the issue of academic freedom already for a very long time. Uh, those of you who follow us know that we already published a paper on the legal aspects of academic freedom in 2010, and that we did the same earlier this year with an updated version of that paper, having a look at what is the state of affairs of the legal protection of academic freedom in Europe. In those papers, we always make a distinction between academic freedom as an individual right, uh, academic freedom as an institutional right, and academic freedom as a state obligation. A second point that we try to make very clear also in those documents is that academic freedom is not only about education, is not only playing in an educational context, but is also playing in a research context. It's also about research. And of course, we all know that the European Union has no shared competences with the member states on education, uh, as it has uh, shared competences with the member states on research. Uh, the fact that she has those competences makes that we, as Leru have been saying time and time again, that the European Commission should act more clearly and more often in favour of academic freedom. It's not uh, because of the fact that uh, they always reduce academic freedom to being an educational matter and as a competence, as a consequence, a competence of the member states, that there are no research related aspects on which the European Commission could act in favour of academic freedom. And one of the grounds on which the uh, European Commission certainly could act is Article 13 uh, of the Charter on Fundamental Rights, uh, as we know it as the third uh, treaty, uh, in fact, uh, which forms the basis of the European Union. Uh, it's clear that Article 13, which is putting forward the right for scientific research, allows action by the Commission uh, in favour of academic freedom. Uh, the case which was decided by the European Court of Justice uh, between the Commission and Hungary uh, in the case of the European University, uh, European Central University in, in Budapest has clearly indicated that Article 13 of the Charter is a potential legal basis for the Commission to take action vis-à-vis -vis specific member states. Although everybody thought that uh, the GATS, uh, the General Agreement on Trade and Services, was the only legal basis which was used in that case uh, by the court to decide on the case. Uh, of course, that's not correct. Uh, the court uh, clearly has indicated that also other legal bases from uh, the EU treaties have been useful in deciding uh, that case. Uh, the court case uh, or the court's decision clearly indicated that action is also possible on the basis of the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union. For example, uh, the articles dealing with the freedom of establishment, the articles dealing with the freedom of services, or, uh, as we all know, the treaty articles dealing with scientific research and the realization of the European research area. It's also clear that the European Commission can act in favour of academic freedom on the basis of international law which it signed up to and which is today part of EU law. And it clearly uh, the case uh, of GATS, the General Agreement on Trade and Services, was clearly used by the Court of Justice in the case of the Commission vis-à-vis -vis Hungary uh, in uh, the case of the European Central University in Budapest. Obviously, if you look at other possible legal actions which can be developed in order to come to a better EU uh, protection of academic freedom, well then, of course, it's always possible for the EU uh, to amend the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union 
or to insert an article in the treaty uh, in favor of academic freedom or if we limit it to the research elements uh, in favor of scientific research. And I think that uh, Mr. Ehler, who is there with you, uh, of course, this afternoon, already take, uh, has taken a number of initiatives in that direction. Now, of course, the EU can also adopt uh, a directive or a regulation on the protection of scientific research or later on academic freedom as a whole, uh, certainly if uh, education would also become a shared competence of the Union. Uh, uh, Mr. Ehler also has taken uh, the initiative uh, to suggest to the Commission uh, to draft a uh, regulation on the protection of scientific research, uh, an endeavour in which we from the side of Leru uh, fully support him, uh, because at the end of the day, when all, one also should be quite clear and sincere about what is uh, at the end of the day, the bottom line of that kind of text is in fact a reflection of a number of legal dispositions which are already existing within national constitutions, within treaties, uh, international treaties, and which are of course fully present in the jurisprudence of the European Court on Human Rights and the Court of Justice. So in a nutshell and to conclude, it's clear that there are already in EU law, several tools to protect academic freedom in general, scientific research in particular, but it certainly would be useful to bring all those tools together into one specific tool specifically designed for the protection of academic freedom, be it by inserting in uh, the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union a specific article dealing with the protection of scientific research or academic freedom in general, or by uh, uh, proposing and adapting uh, or adopting a specific uh, directive or regulation on the protection of uh, scientific research or academic freedom as such. That certainly would be uh, a very nice uh, reflection of the jurisprudence which is already existing within a European context. Thank you very much and hope you have an excellent afternoon and an interesting debate. Thank you.